now are fixable. And as you can see on the screen, he was most concerned with the four turnovers. So we got to stop hurting ourselves offensively, and we'll be fine. Well, Beth is exactly right, and it's the unforced turnovers, the stepping out of bounds, going out of bounds, with the A and defensive pressure. You've got to make sure you're shortening your passes and you're precise offensively. And Sidney Colson knocking down the three. A and is really forcing that zone to shift. They're being patient in their offense. Third first point. Colson again in his last eight games, averaging 10 points and 7 assists. It's going to lead to 13 nothing. Mitchell battling, and that's not a great shot. Georgia now 0 for 6 from the floor. Adams oftentimes will hit that shot, but that three fell short. Here's Georgia's first substitute. It's Anne Marie Armstrong, a sophomore from North Cross, Georgia, coming in as Jasmine Hassel takes a seat. Armstrong considered to be a key today, according to head coach Andy Landers, a player that can be quite good when she's on. And he was just waiting for the day when the clicks all the time with Anne Marie. When she's such a versatile player, can play positions two through five, can knock down the three-point shot. But I think defensively, her length is what he wants to create some problems for Texas a &M. Georgia finally gets on the board. Jasmine James able to create off the dribble. Took him almost six minutes to score. James, the leading score, only a sophomore out of Memphis. Georgia changing up their defense on the made shot, extending that 2 3 zone. Armstrong, good job bodying up Adams. He got the pass but was unable to put the shot in. Vic Schaefer, the longtime associate head coach, what is the defensive coordinator on this team? Almost like a football team. He's the guy who draws up all the defensive schemes for Coach Blair. So the one thing that Coach Blair always talks about is this is a team that's going to guard you, and he gives Vic Schaefer all the credit. He has his team defensively ready to play, comes up with all the different scenarios, and these guys have been together for a long time, so they know what each other expects. Great staff, Kelly Barnes, Ronnie Harris also on the staff over there at a and Over to Portia Phillips, but a good closeout. Andre got help from White. Armstrong is bottled up. He's in big trouble and throws it away. Yes, she does. Georgia well, has to break down the zone defense. They have to get to the basket. They have to get to the basket. Well, that's the great thing about the Texas A&M defense. It's not only are they terrific individual defensive players one on one, but their defensive rotation, their help side, everything is there. Georgia so far to only two points in the first seven minutes of the game. Colson dials up another three. Sydney has six. Texas A&M has a 14-point lead. And the Georgia Bulldogs have to take a timeout. So Georgia has to make an adjustment defensively. What's happening is right Jackson James has to pick up the ball. If we roll it right here. We're going to see on the ball reversal See where Jasmine James is right there? Watch. She takes the dribble. It's such a long pass. There's no way she can recover. Meredith Mitchell has got to be able to come out off of the backside and contest that three-point shot. Force an extra pass or a dribble. That's too long of a pass for James to be able to cover. Sidney Colson has hit a couple of threes in the last minute and 11 seconds. Sidney Colson, so key. We talked about her in the open. Beth Mullins with the, the profile on her. And so far... She has been a force. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues on ESPN Monday. That's tomorrow. It's 7 Eastern. Dayton Regional Final is top seed Tennessee against number two seed Notre Dame. Follows that with Gonzaga Stanford out in Spokane. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship is over Capital One on ESPN Monday. Gonzaga, 11 seed, the lowest seed ever to make it to the Elite Eight. Can they make it to the Final Four? And they played Stanford earlier in the season to a four-point ball game. That's going to be a terrific matchup. Colson can't get it off the break. Phillips comes up with a much-needed rebound for Georgia. Kansas barely surviving last night against North Carolina. Georgia continues to be ice cold. And rush shots, quick shots. 
one of eight from the floor. They've taken half as many shots as A&M. Adams with the opportunity for a three-point play. And defensively, Texas A&M is just in control. They're forcing bad passes. They're forcing quick shots. Don't convert on the offensive end. But their defensive pressure, taking Georgia out of their rhythm, and then offensively, I really like it when they get the ball to Danielle Adams down low early. She can get herself going with easy, high percentage looks, and she's a terrific foul shooter. At 80%, second best on the team, she averages just under six attempts per game, does a good job of getting herself to the line, and then hits them when she gets it. And after the free throw, Texas a and comes out in a little zone, again, forcing Georgia to... Think quickly on their feet. No quick shots, no rush shots. Adams left alone from the outside. Rebound corralled by Miller. And the freshman takes it all the way to the basket. Misses Phillips underneath. Tough spot. Wanted the foul, didn't get it. Adams bringing it up. Gives it over to the real point guard. Colson, who has three threes already. Timeout, Georgia. So Danielle Adams shows you not only can she score, can she defend, and she can rebound, but she can play the point position as well. And Gary Blair just raves about her basketball IQ and understanding of the game and situation. And a perfect pass to Sydney Colson. Three for three from the three-point line. 22-2, Texas A&M right now blasting away at Georgia. Georgia team, we talked to them yesterday, and they felt like they were finally starting to click. They lost 4-5 or five going into the SEC tournament. They were able to beat Florida State by two points to get here, but this looks like the team that lost four out of five down the stretch. It sure does, and they told us to get back to where they were defensively. That's what they needed to do to be successful, and that's what they had done up until this point. But defensively right now, they're a little bit a step slow. You can see it in their defensive energy. But Texas A&M just taking advantage, coming out, playing with a purpose. Texas A&M has not done well in the last four NCAA tournaments. Particularly the last three. In fact, five of the last seven times they've been in the NCAA, they've lost to the lower seed. They lost to Gonzaga in Seattle last year. In the second round. Looking like world beaters up 20. Springtime belongs to the doers. Those of us who know grass doesn't turn green just because the calendar says to. And that a big difference can grow from a small budget. For those of us with grass on our sneakers, dirt on our jeans, and a lawn that's as healthy as our savings, the days are about to get a whole lot greener. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. We're lowering the cost of a day in the dirt with a special buy on this mulch. Three bags are just ten bucks. It's the Giant Food Challenge. You got your fans all fired up, Kenny. Well, you thought I wouldn't. And I maintain Team Bolt is going to win this whole thing. We've been vlogging. We've been dropping Twitter bombs from the sky. Twitter bombs? What have you done for Supernova? I'm just telling people to taste it. It's in stores now, and it's delicious. And I'm telling people to go to dietdewchallenge.com and vote for Supernova. On the internet? Good luck, Kenny. Pick the next Diet Mountain Dew flavor at dietdewchallenge.com. Imagine if you could keep your engine as close as possible to factory clean. Pennzoil Ultra. A revolutionary synthetic oil that takes clean where it's never been before. Nothing feels like a factory clean engine. And nothing keeps you closer to factory clean 